Welcome to Air Conditioning Contractors of America 4.1 Airflow Across the Heat Exchanger. To do home performance evaluations, you don't need to be an airflow expert. It would help, but it's not necessary. But you do need to know some basic airflow measurement types and ways and means to do it. And so that's what we're going to cover here is one way. Heat exchangers are basically where the heat's exchanged. Now on the HVAC or electrical or heat pump or whatever it is on the left hand side it's the coil and that coil has a refrigerant inside and the air has to go across it at the right amount or the heat exchange doesn't go properly. On the other side we've got a heat exchanger, we've got a fire on one side and we've got the air coming on the other side. If that air doesn't cool down that side with the fire on it enough then we may have a problem or even a dangerous situation. So the airflow through the heat exchanger is very important and it's critical to get it right. Manufacturers know that the airflow and knowing the exact amount of airflow and making sure you have the minimum amount of airflow and you don't have more than the maximum amount of airflow is critical to their equipment operating efficiently and operating safely. So they've spent a lot of time figuring out how we can do this in the field. Most manufacturers have solved this problem for us in the field by saying, okay, we know what the pressure drop across our box correlates to as far as airflow through our box. So we're going to give you those numbers and if you make those measurements measuring the static pressure and subtracting the difference then you'll know how much airflow is going through the box. Another method that you can use that they have is across the heat exchanger itself. Now the heat exchangers will have a pressure drop also. Additionally, the fan and the blowers will have a pressure drop and sometimes that can be measured across the blower and you can use a chart on a blower or on the heat exchanger or on the whole box. But most of the manufacturers that we'll be looking at and the way we're going to be looking at it is across the whole box because that's generally the way you're going to do it. I'm just pointing out these other ways because if it's noted the other way on the table that you're going to look at later, then you're going to need to look at it however it's listed on the table in order to get meaning out of the static pressure measurements. So what is a static pressure measurement? Well static pressure is inside of duct the air pressure is even all around the inside of the duct. On it, It's like when you blow up a balloon you get the same pressure on all the sides. And that static pressure for HVAC is measured in inches of water column. This is a typical static pressure probe. Now it has a magnet down on the bottom and it holds it. When you drill a hole in a duct, it'll slide in. Uh, you take that pointed end and you point it into the airflow and then there's two little holes in the side that you can see. Let's get a close up of those. Here's a close up and there's two little holes and when the, air, the, the pointed end is pointed into the airstream, those holes are sideways to the airstream so they're only picking up the static pressure. They're not getting any of the velocity of the air passing through the duct. Here's an illustration. We've got the static pressure probe and it's, it's, it's pointing into the airflow and it's going, the air is coming out of the bottom into that yellow tubing and the tubing then goes over and it goes into the Dwyer meter there that's at the bottom corner and that's a, that's a oil manometer and that's kind of cool. That's how we used to do it. You'd use oil or a water manometer. If you use a water manometer, it's actually an inches of water column. And uh, if you have really high velocities, you could use a water manometer, but most people use an oil manometer because right here on this one down at the bottom, it looks like it's about 0.40. It's pushed the oil up that much by the pressure of the air going through this duct. For home performance evaluation, you're going to have an electronic manometer of some sort that measures pressure differential as one of the key selections. So you're not going to use an oil manometer and you're probably not going to use a magnahelic gauge. Even though I have those as illustrations because it's easy to see. You can see the needle swinging when it gets the pressure on it on the magnahelic or you can see the oil going up if you push on a manometer. So it's good for illustration but in, in reality, keep in the back of your mind, that's how it's working. It's putting pressure on it. And so you use a meter that you have that you're going to use for something else like room pressure differential or something like that. Now one thing you want to make sure of is that the hoses are good because they're just transferring the pressure. So if you have a leak or a pinhole in the hose, it's not going to transfer the pressure right. If it's not hooked up right to the meter and to the static pressure probe, it's not going to transfer the pressure right. If you're standing on it or your ladder's sitting on it, it's not going to transfer it right. If it's kinked, it's not going to transfer it right. So you got to make sure that your hoses are not kinked and that they're in good condition. 
Here we got a typical box, and we're measuring on both sides of the box, and we're getting our static pressure. Our supply static pressure is plus 0 0.20, and our return is minus 0 0.40, and you add them together. You ignore the negative. It's, it's an absolute value that you need to know. It's the absolute difference. So our external static pressure, or our static pressure on this box, is 0 0.60 inches of water column and that would be the number that we would use to look at the tables and to compare and see how much airflow is going through the unit. One thing to use the charts we're going to need to know how fast the fans going because the chart has different pressure depending on what the fan speed is and so we're going to need to know how to figure that out. This is a typical fan that you'll see in most units. It's got spade clips on it and you click those spade clips up and depending on which ones you use or don't use it tells you what speed the fans going. Many units now will have a pen connector and then based on where you set tabs or switches it'll it'll choose the speeds and then you need to look at the tabs and to decide what the speeds are going to be. Now if you look at the instruction book that's what that's going to be necessary to be able to find where the tabs are. And we're going to look at this in a typical instruction book I pulled off of the uh, internet and there we see directions for putting the jumpers in that do the speeds and select different things and we're going to look at a little close-up of it there's the high speed box that we've selected to take a look at here's high speed and there's actually five pins there it's got numbers one through four but it's on pins four and five for high speed which is a hundred percent that's all that motor can do medium speed 70 percent is on pins three and four so the pin on the far right side is out and the two pins on the left side are open and that's how you would know you were on medium high speed medium low speed two pins on the right are open one pin on the left is open and you're at 38 percent of the airflow low speed all the pins to the right are open and the two pins on the left hand side are connected now one thing you can do, you can look at the distributor, the residential startup checklist that may be left in the packet with the unit, or you can look at the equipment startup from the manufacturer's sheet, and you can see what, what speed they think they left it on and make sure that they got it right, because generally this will be correct. The technicians usually are very good and they know what speed they're setting the fan at. Here's the star of our show, the fan performance chart. Now we just spent all this time talking about static pressure and we've spent all this time talking about fan speeds just so we can use this chart. Now this is a chart that tells you the measurement outside of the box on this unit. Uh, it says down at the bottom, note all air data is measured external to the unit with an air filter in place. Electric heaters have no appreciable air resistance. So you can measure it outside the box like we talked about and this, this chart is designed by a manufacturer to be measured outside the box. So, what are we looking at here? Well, we've got the external static pressure, and if I go down to 0 0.60 on the external static pressure and draw lines all the way across, I would have the different CFM values. Now, how would I know what CFM value it is? Well, I've got to know what speed the unit's running. At medium speed, we would have 640 cubic feet per minute of air going through this unit. At low speed, we would have 510 cubic feet per minute of airflow going through it. At high speed, we would have 725 cubic feet. So it's obvious that we need to know the fan speed to know whether we have 510, 640, or 725 cubic feet per minute of air going through this fan. Just for your information, L over S stands for liters per second, and that's the metric uh, equivalent to the cubic feet per minute. And we have watts on there. And watts, that's the power that's being consumed. And you can see that the faster the motor's going and the more air it's moving, the more watts are being consumed. Going along with your liters per second, we have pascals for PA there for measuring the external static pressure, the pressure difference. And that's a different measurement uh, list. And, and generally on your electronic tools, you can choose to do it in water column or you can do it in pascals. Uh, we usually use water gauge in, in the United States, but you may see some listings from some European or some Oriental type equipment that's in Pascal's, in which case the chart, you just be able to use a tool. You can flip it back and forth any way you want to. Acceptable documentation. Written documentation for the HVAC static pressure test equipment to include model and serial numbers and calibration data if required. Test date, location, name of technician, pictures and notes on items identified.
You should now be able to measure external static pressure across the heat exchanger or the manufacturer's box, which is generally the case. Find and verify evaporator fan speed. Explain how to use a static pressure probe and meter. Use an OEM chart to determine airflow across the heat exchanger.